lead all the way to Jason Inman. I'm Adam Havik. I've competed in the Schmodown twice before. Lost both times. Really excited to be doing singles and uh, really excited to see sort of what I can do without what I thought was my better half. I'm really stoked to kind of get my own shot to do it. So unfortunately, you will not be leaving here today as the winner of this Fatal 5-Way Intergeek Good Man. Hell of a performance. But it's not the last time we're going to see you. I want to be back. I got to prove myself, redeem myself. Side story. Name four of the 12 remaining dwarves in Thorin's company in the Hobbit film. Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, <laughs> yeah, Chewbacca, but... Princess Leia. Thor winner today in his first match ever. Wow. Mark, the You know, uh, I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little upset. Lion's End came in. They recruited a new guy. I've been here three times. I've lost three times now. Always to the last question. Cushing, I'm coming for Donica, I'm coming for Inman, I'm taking all of you guys down. It's gonna be Who played Eureka, a aka Lady Deathstrike in X2, X-Men Unite? I have no idea this game is a fix. This is exactly, this is exactly and my favorite. Your winner! By way of technical <laughs> itself in the midst, maybe the eye of the hurricane. If this is the movie Twister, there's cows flying everywhere after the events of the Collider Collision. And I'm Philip Seymour Hoffman yelling, it's coming! <laughs> because things are crazy. It's like when I take my uh, box of cereal and open up the bottom end to get to the crumbs faster. This is just pieces all over the kitchen table here in the Schmodown. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it, we've got Sam has, has vacated titles. He's walked off. He's Alex done. is the Star Wars yeah. champion when I feel I should still be the champion. I should have been in there. We got things, parts flying around. Yeah, I mean, I'm still putting together that cereal metaphor you just dropped All on. All right, us. so you get the box. Flip it open. That is Ken Napsok from the Afternoon Podcast. I am Mark Ellis, Baby Carrots himself. And the big thing, my takeaway from the collision, is that Andrew Guy somehow, some way, was able to defeat Dan Merle. And if, if that wasn't enough, you had Rachel Cushing advance to round three, yeah. which we could probably guess was going to happen. Now, and Draco is playing Ethan. There's so much to piece together from that, not the least of which is a shocking announcement at the end that we have really no teams heading into the tournament on hand of the, uh, the, the so 
so-called Commissioner Thad Williams, who is really just a puppet for Mike Kalinowski. This is in chaos right now, Ken. Yeah, you know what? Kalinowski's done a great job of calling out the corruption in this league, as he says. But I think now we have a new brand of corruption. But you know what? With all this chaos, it is the great philosopher, 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 uh -huh. yep. Peter Bazooka Baelish, Joe. that says chaos is a ladder. From this chaos, someone will emerge. And there is one constant. The lion's den is gone, but the Knights again, me and Mark Donica, are here to rule in their steed. So, what a cute name that is. Jay-Z and Dagnina together. It looks good on t-shirts. On its own. It's going to sell a lot of merch on T Public, but what will it actually put under the white-hot spotlight? That's what we're looking at with this matchup here today, because yep. even this matchup has been affected by the Caligula-like reign of Mike Kanowski. Uh, Kalinowski, because you look at uh, Keaton Markey, right? Yeah. She was supposed to play Emma Fife. Right. And she challenged her. All of a sudden, everybody who advanced to round two just got thrown into a Vitamix, which is still $500 at Best Buy. They hit go, and next thing you know, now it's Keaton going up against Adam Halibak, who somehow was able to best his good buddy Hector Navarro in round one. I don't know how that happened. I have no idea what's going to happen today. I can get you one of those for $250 at a swap meet. A guy named Buy sells them. Best Buy, B-I-A. It's a great uh, – he'll get, you'll, you'll get that Vitamix real cheap. Uh, yeah, uh, Adam Halavik coming off that big, big, big victory of his partner. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, this is a chance for him to really strike out on his own. Keaton coming off the victory uh, against Rosie. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of both of them, what they did in that match. And <laughs> this one's one of those too hard to call. So. Yeah, and these two have done battle before. Let's not forget that when you did have uh, Keaton Markey placing third in the five-way. Adam Halbach placing second. So right. they both know their stuff, and they've proved that here before. But now they go head-to-head -head in a matchup that is going to see one of them advance into the third round. We had a lot of trash talk pre-show. Let's see what they had to say. I feel pretty confident. I feel super excited. Uh, beating Hector is always a joy in life. Uh, too bad you guys couldn't see us play Injustice 2. Uh, I, packed, I, I passed him a bag of salt quite a few times uh, while playing. So it was great. But I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens next. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing my next opponent. You know, I just showed up today and I'm so freaking confused because Mike decided to mix a ton of things up and I was supposed to be facing Emma so that's where all my studying and prep has gone into but now all of a sudden I'm being told I'm facing Adam and I'm like I've already faced Adam like I know I can beat him because I almost beat him if I wouldn't have gotten that freaking Philosopher's Stone question wrong but like I'm not prepped for Adam I'm prepped for Emma right now like what the hell I think she's actually a very very good competitor so I'm looking forward to seeing how we go, how we play one-on-one, -on -one, because I think it's an interesting dynamic. You know, I've watched some of her matches, so I know some of her strengths. I know a little bit of her weaknesses, and I think, you know, if she's seen some of the matches that I've done, I think she kind of did the same thing, so I'm sort of interested to see how this will sort of play uh, in one game together. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Adam knows nothing about Harry Potter. He knows very little about Lord of the Rings, which is starting to become a little bit of a strong suit for me. I've been studying it really hard. Um, but I'm really nervous about Adam's kind of knowledge on uh, the comic book stuff, like the Marvel, the DC, because sometimes that's hit or miss for me. I feel like my, my strengths are very strong, and I've tried to work on some of my weaknesses, so I feel really confident going forward and seeing you know, who I'm going to be up against. And watching so many of these Schmodown matches, I have a good handle on what the players, certain players are good at, and I have a feeling that I can really take advantage of their weaknesses as well. My thoughts, if I win this and go on to the next round, which I'm going to, um, are that, you know, maybe I'll get a chance to actually fight Mike and be like, screw you, dude, for mixing this all up. Because it's not fair. And who said you get to choose what happens in this tournament? I mean, I love the uh, the moxie, if you will, of Keaton Markey because she still is ready to call people out. Didn't really work out for her last time. Right. She called out. I mean, that's not even playing her. And for Adam, he's right. This is just another step in his advance towards continued legitimacy in the inner geek time. I think beating Hector Navarro was such a huge win for him. You wonder about a possible emotional or mental letdown today. That is not going to be the case with Keaton Markey. It happens. You beat a team that you're not supposed to beat on Monday Night Football. You're losing to the Buccaneers on Sunday. 
That's what happens in these uh, intense competitions. It's 122 degrees in this studio. It's going to be hotter out there when the competitors get there to fight. He's off Serial Metaphors, and he's back on the good side with Sports Metaphors. Ken, what is the tale of the tape here today? What are the competitors good at? All right, Keaton Magic Markey. She is good at Harry Potter movies, Disney movies, and random shit. She loves random shit, like cereal boxes upside down where you open to get never oh, mind. There we go. Adam Halavik, he is good at comic book movies, Marvel, DC. He talks a lot about that stuff. I happen to know he's really good at Star Wars, and I really know he's good at day drinking in San Diego. He knows how to crush an IPA or two. Will Keaton Markey be another IPA for him to crush, or will she be a pilsner that is poured on the sad head of Adam Halavik? That metaphor went off the rails, but we are about to get started here. I'm ready, Ken. Are you ready? Uh, I'm ready. Then let's get ready to schmodown. Good crowd today. Good, Good crowd here today. Introducing the competitors will be the, the I, I don't want to say Golden Boys because somebody else has one of those, but this one, it's uh, maybe of a honey crisp sugar bear vibe. Uh, I like that. I like that. I like that. You, you don't have milk with your cookie crisp, you freak. All right, here we go. Introducing first. Representing the Popcorn Talk Network with an inner geekdom record of one win and one defeat. Is this Michael Bolton? It is. It's Keaton Magic Marky. Yeah. Keaton Marky emerging yeah. with a lightsaber that somehow got melted in the heat right. of Burbank, California. Fun in her lights. She's showering in the glow of yeah. Michael Bolton. We talk about a golden voice. I celebrate his entire catalog, Ken. <laughs> Oh, yes. All right. And her opponent. Representing Hyper RPG. With an inner geekdom record of one win and one defeat. This is Adam, the head maker. Drinking water, uh, holding up a glass of what we can only assume is water, some sort of clear liquid. Yep, yep, I like he went to the sensible polo shirt section at Target like I did, and I uh, respect him for that. We're twins, Ken. We you are. never know with Adam Halvac. He's got more black on his shirt and on his facial hair than Steven Seagal in the mid-90s, and he looks just as focused. He is on deadly ground here going up against Keaton Markey. Absolutely. All right, competitors in round one, you're going to hear ten questions from 10 different corners of the inner geekdom universe. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. The questions are all asked to the field. So as soon as you hear the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard we so kindly provided you with, as well as the magic marker. That's also on our dime. No need to invoice us. Now, Adam and Keaton, once you write down your answer and we ask you for it by name, please show your whiteboard to the camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. I will remind the competitors of their JTE rule. You have three usages of those throughout the match. If you're not sure if you heard a question right, you need to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge if you don't like the way a question was ruled. And with all that out of the way, Adam, you are the favorite in this match. How are you feeling? I feel real good. Feels real good, like You've an been 80s radio. <laughs> Keaton Mark, are you feeling okay? Yeah, feel great. Then it's time to <laughs> schmodown. <laughs> Woo! First time I did that order right, Ken. Did you? Big day in the Alice household. First question out of ten. Category is Star Trek. <laughs> How many Star Trek films were released in the 1990s? Uh, Mark, do you think the answer is higher uh, or lower than the amount of times I had sex in the 90s? Oh, boy. I did not follow you, but I've seen Instagram pictures with you with long hair, and i got to imagine more Star Trek movies came out. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens are down. Answers coming first from Adam. Four? That's right. Four. That's right. And to answer the other question, Mark. Both competitors on the board, they are merely nine questions away from a yeah. perfect round one. And it, and, uh, <laughs> tight, tight, tight. It was higher, Mark. <laughs> well, hey, you really picked up in the 2000s. Middle Earth is your next category. Middle Earth, what is the name of the King of Rohan in Lord of the Rings? Mm -hmm. 
I would assume he just goes by King of Rohan. You know, I love I love about those movies. Everyone speaks in a whisper. Whisper. All right. Five. That's right. Countdown. Four. That's not right. Three. Two and one, looking for answers, starting with Keaton. I said Ministera, but that's not right. Oh, that's a nice place, but not the uh, right answer. That's real king. Uh, that is not. We're looking for Theoden. <laughs> king Theoden. No, damn. King damn. Theoden. Damn. A little more specific and a little more accurate on both counts, so we <laughs> remain tied at one as we go back to Ken with the question from the MCU. Third question comes in the category of MCU, I as just Mark said. That said. Uh, what is the name of Thanos' home world? Home world. Where does he watch TV? Guy, Thanos would be the worst uh, concert attendee because Five, he starts snapping his four, fingers. Three, two, <clears throat> and up, one. Looking for answers, starting with Adam. Titan. That is correct for a point. Keaton. I don't know. Uh, that is incorrect. No. Um, yeah. Taking one the lead, lead at two to one. Your next <laughs> question comes from the very <laughs> British accented world of Harry Potter. <laughs> and your question is, who casts the Patronus that leads Harry to Gryffindor's sword in the Deathly Hallows part one? It sounds like a description for a Cinemax movie at 11 p.m. <laughs> A little bit of nudity getting the Gryffindor sword. Five, four, three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Keaton. Hermione? Uh, that is incorrect. Adam? Snape? That is correct. Oh, my God. All right. Keaton uh, feeling a little bad for the miss there. Oh, three my God. Uh, I know. I. Oh. Fifth question. You're halfway there. Fifth question. Category is DC. What was the name of the yellow spandex-clad villain that Lex Luthor uh, created in Superman IV, The Quest for Peace? A comma no. and a, oh, there's an apostrophe there. That, yeah, I put those in there to trip you up. Yeah, and thank you. And you them like a pro. Right. For answers here in five, four, three, two, and one, starting with Adam. Nuclear Man. That is correct. Chitara. Uh, no. <laughs> four go. one lead. Four one lead. For voice by Gene Break out. Adam Halavec not embarrassed to admit he's seen Superman for the oh, Quest for I Peace. I love that movie. I don't multiple care. Multiple times. <laughs> uh, some crowd members are fans. It's a real as well. jokey movie. I don't we care. We move on to heroes and villains. Mm. These are questions about good guys or bad guys or gals or girls. Your next question: Who plays ruthless mob boss Frank D'Amico in Kickass? Mm. You know, I always get Snape. Confused yeah. with uh, Snoke. Uh, he's probably the same person. It's a connected universe, I heard. I bet they were roommates. Five, four, three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Keaton. Josh Brolin. <laughs> Incorrect. Adam. Mark Strong? That is correct. Mark Strong, five points for Adam. Commanding five to one lead here in the midway point of round one. The crowd has <laughs> fallen silent. Yes. Clearly, like they are on the team of Keaton. Can she make a comeback? All right. Question seven is in the category of DCEU. DCEU. What two characters dig up Superman's body in Justice League? I uh, was not aware Superman had passed. I didn't know that the man with the mustache was the same as that. that. I don't know. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Adam. Cyborg and the Flash. That's correct. Keaton. Batman and Wonder Woman. Oh, no. Mm. Oh. Batman and Wonder Woman not doing the digging. They hire the underlings, the interns like of the Justice League for that job. <laughs> Our next question comes from the world of oh Star God. Wars. And your Star Wars question is, according to Yoda, what does a Jedi never use the Force for? Is it opening cookie boxes? Because I think that would be what I would well, use I think a Jedi it. can do that on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, a Jedi fair. can use the Force Five, to build a hammock. Four, three, two, and one. Pens down, looking for answers, starting with Keaton. Themselves. No, incorrect. Adam. Anger? No, attack. Looking for attack. They would never use the Force to attack. Or open cereal boxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, question. Question nine. Question nine comes in the category of Marvel. Marvel. Who plays J. Jonah Jameson in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films? Two and a half really good movies in that trilogy. Oh, I see Two what you did half. there. Uh, I like emo Spider-Man. Uh, I like uh, Venom, because I played it. four, three, two, and one. Looking for answers, starting with Adam. J.K. Simmons. That is correct. I don't even want to share. All she's right. Not she's gonna, not going to withhold her answer, so we can only answer. assume it is not correct. <laughs> yes. And we 
cannot give her the point. Seven to one, and we move on to Mixed Bag. She's got some fans, apparently. <laughs> mixed Bag is your last category in round one. This is Mixed Bag. Could come from any mm. corner of the inner geekdom galaxy. Your question happens to be, what actress played Supergirl in 1984's Supergirl? Cinematic is that classic. even a movie? It's a cinematic classic, all right? I, I had it on VHS. Did you really? Uh, no. Not the best Five. thing to come. Four, I have 1984. Three, two, one. Looking for answers, starting with Keaton. Kim Cattrall. Incorrect. Good guess. Right. I like that guess. Helen Slater. That's right. Helen wow. Slater from Adam to take the It's out on Blu-ray this month. Uh, eight to one lead. Eight to one lead. That is an eight to one lead going into you round two. A commanding lead for Adam Halavac. And we go to round two as I remind the competitors of the rules in round two. This is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, destiny, perhaps doom. The wheel has 12 different categories. Ten of them are from ten different places in the inner geekdom universe. You also have spinner's choice and opponent's choice are on the wheel. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Whatever category you spin, you will be asked to answer five questions from that category. Each question is worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us to give you multiple choice, at which point the value of the question will go down to one point. Keep in mind, competitors, there is stealing available in round number two. Adam Halavec, you not only are the favorite today, you have a commanding 8-1 to one lead over Keaton Markey. Would you like to spin first or defer to your opponent? Um, I'm going to let Keaton spin first. Keaton's going to spin Put first. Put the pressure on. Put the pressure and on. And here uh, comes Keaton. Over. You got to keep that confidence going into <laughs> round number two for Keaton. You got to get some points on the Good board spin. here, Ken. Spin is in. Yeah, she needs this, and she might need some steals from Adam, too. A lot of pressure on this spin this here. Is, some, some of these intergeekdom categories spin. get really, really tough. Yeah, they do. They and do. looking at Middle Earth. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. How well do you know your Minas Tirith and Theodens? <laughs> you can spin again if you don't like this category. Lord knows we don't like pronouncing the names. What would you like to do? You want to keep Middle Earth or you want to spin again? Good cheers. Uh, she's right, going to spin again. Spinning she's spinning away. Spin again. Nothing to live for. Keaton slammed the door on him. The crowd right. wants spinner's choice. And they really Kendis do. They might spin. get it. Looks no. Like a little too much but muscle. she's past it and DCEU movies. All right. All right. DCEU movies. These are movies in the current DCEU. All right. Oh, no. At the time of this recording, we have not seen any footage from Aquaman, so that will not be a part of this. I should have stuck with middle. All right, Keaton, I will be asking you your DCEU questions. And your first question of five is... Mm. What hip-hop artist has a brief cameo in Suicide Squad as Monster T, a gangster who has a misunderstanding with the Joker over Harley? Um, Ice Cube? That is incorrect for incorrect. the steal, Adam Hell. I don't get to use multiple choice, correct? You do not get to use multiple choice, that is it's, correct. Um, oh my god. Is that your in. final answer? No. Answer. Um, in. Common. That is correct. Two, two points. points two Halibut. points. That steal. is not the way Keaton wanted to start no. off this round. I should have multiple choice. What was I thinking? All right. Your All next right. question. In the movie Man of Steel, the ancient Kryptonian sentry ship was discovered in what country? Uh, multiple choice, please. I can certainly provide that for you. Is it A, Canada, B, Iceland, C, Greenland, or D, Norway? Greenland. That is incorrect. incorrect. Adam Halvac, can you steal that one as well? Norway? That is also incorrect. incorrect. Looking to our neighbors up north, givers of Brian Adams, Canada. <laughs> oh, Canada. All right, Keen, your next question. Uh huh. How many years has Bruce Wayne been operating as Batman according to Batman v Superman? Um, multiple choice. Is it 8 15 years? B, 18 years, C, 20 years, or D, 22 years? 20 years. 
One point for Teach. Much needed point here, and at this point, she has two questions left in Thank this you, round. Thank you, Ben Affleck. Yep. <laughs> you just want to stay alive and yep. hope you can uh, maybe steal some from Adam in the rest of this round and then have a remarkable round three. Keaton, your next question. What does Hippolyta give to Diana when she says her goodbyes? Oh, I think I know it, but I'm just going to say multiple choice blade save. We can do that. Is it A, the God Killer Sword, B, the Lasso of Truth, C, Antiope's Tiara, or D, the Bracelets of Submission? The uh, Tiara. It is the so Tiara for point. another point. <laughs> Starting right. to manage your way around this round. All right, and your last question. Oh, this is the saddest score. <laughs> In round number two, what caused Krypton to implode in Man of Steel? Multiple choice, please. Was it A, a black hole developed nearby? B, Krypton's sun burnt out? C, over-harvesting of the planet's core? Or D, the Phantom Zone expanded into reality? Uh, the sun. It was not the <clears throat> sun. Adam Halvick. Over-harvesting the core. They harvested too darn much, and it cost them big. Adam Halvick gets the steal, gets the point. It's 11-3, to three and he has an eight-point lead. Right. And now he has the ability to get 10 more points going into round three, at which point we would have a knockout. <laughs> Adam Halvick, you not only got a couple steals, you now get to spin the wheel yourself. Here comes Halvick to a rousing round of applause here from the crowd. <laughs> Here we go. All right, here's the spin cannon. Here um, we go. All right. You wonder if he has a friend at all in the studio, Ken. Yeah. I almost feel like I should take I, him out for a beer after I, the show. I, 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 I have a friend with him as well. Um, he feel bad for oh, me. He might have gotten spinner's choice. Whoa. Villains. Villains, do you want to keep villains? Do you want to keep villains? Do you want to spin again? Gonna need, uh, gonna need your decision here. Gonna need your decision in five seconds. He's gonna stick with it. He's gonna keep villains, Ken. All right. He's gonna All keep right. villains. Oh, sure don't. Sure don't. And he is right. These could be villains from any corner of the inner geekdom universe, right. or as the crowd would view him, these could be questions about Adam Halavec. That's right. It's hey, my true Hollywood you know. story. All right, you have four questions in this round, Adam. Five, five questions, and I don't play in the inner geekdom. Here. He eats cereal, folks. He's not great at math. Give the kid yeah. a break. Five questions. Five questions. First one coming in. What was the name of the Death Eater that was appointed to the post of Head of Magical Law Enforcement under Voldemort's regime? I said the name, I'm sorry. Dear God. Multiple choice. Yaxley, B, Runcorn, C, Thickness, D, Caro. Is that a, where's Roca? What? Thickness? <laughs> Thick, it's th What's the answer? I'm gonna go with B. That's incorrect. Can, first. Can you repeat them? God that, damn it. That was hard to understand, but sure. I could not Come hear here. you. I'm going to repeat. Sorry. Okay. A, Yaxley. B, Runcorn. C, Thick Nisi. I don't know. D, Caro. Oh. Um. A. That is correct for a point. Yeah. All right. Deal. All right. As the Bee Gees would say, Ken, ha, 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 staying alive. Oh, <laughs> please, please. All right. Second question out of five. Who served as viceroy to the Trade Federation in The Phantom Menace? New Gunray. That's correct for two points. That's a big two, two points, Ken. Points. All right, so now it is 13 to 4 in Adam Halleback. <laughs> we're looking at, we're, we're in knockout range right now, Ken, so buckle your safety belts. All right, here we go. Who said, do you want to know why I use a knife? Guns are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Heath Ledger is the Joker. We're going to accept that as the right answer, the Joker. That is correct. That's two points. It's now 15 to four, so technically, Adam, he has knocked out Keaton, but not quite yet because he has one more question in round number two. So if he doesn't get this and Keaton steals it, she would advance to round yes. three where we've seen anything he is, a, is possible. He has a couple more questions here. A couple he more questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, here you go, Adam. What actor, who also starred in Arrow on the CW, provided the motion capture and voice of the white orc Azog in the Hobbit films. 
Can I do multiple choice? You may. A, Dominic Purcell. B, Michael Jai White. C, Vinny Jones. D, Manu Bennett. Would be a knockout. Manu Bennett? It's not a knockout. Just one one point that is correct. The way from a knockout. So Manu Bennett, uh, 16 to 4, 12 yep. point game. So now Adam Halovac, all he really has to do is just get one point. Just get one point, and we're done. All right. So Final morbid. question. Jesus. Final question coming in here. I feel like they're just pouring salt. In the X Men first class, after injuring Charles by deflecting the bullets from Moira's gun, Eric nearly kills Moira by doing what? <clears throat> um, I believe he tries to choke her to death with the necklace she's wearing. And your winner! Five way of knockout! The answer is correct. It's Adam Harvin! Oh, now, what a haymaker! Keaton Markey, you should just, uh, very, very tight. You know, you go into this, you, you're preparing for one opponent, you get thrown with another opponent by uh, Mike Kalinowski's hand. Adam Halovac showing up, playing a great job. The answer was indeed strangled her with her dog tags, which we do not re recommend you trying at home. Uh, they keep Marquis a worthy uh, competitor. She came out to Michael yep. Bolton. Maybe that affected her? But sometimes that's what Michael Bolton, he'll either inspire you or hold you back. It's, 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 it's a flip of the record at the time of that. Very emotional singer, that Bolton. And uh, Adam Halovac, a hell of a job. He clearly knows a lot from a lot of different places in the inner geekdom. He is somebody to look out for, whoever he's going to be taking on in round three, Ken. He's on a roll here. He had the big win over Hector. He has another victory here. He moves on in the tournament. And we're going to hear from both the winner and the loser with the wonderful Jen Sturger. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Adam. Adam, that was an absolutely dominant performance. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel good. I, I feel like a lot of those questions it were sort of in my favor, which, thank God, because then obviously I would have been completely crushed had I gotten things like Middle Earth or Harry Potter. Uh, I think Keen would have completely dominated me, but man, I got real lucky on this round, yeah. And you spun villains and you stuck with it. Like, that's a, that's a pretty yeah. risky move. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't really sure whether or not I should keep it because, like I was saying, it could be villains from any franchise, any movie in history. But like you said, with Middle Earth on the wheel. Yeah, with that and a, you know opponent's choice, I figured, screw it, I'll just take the risk. I have multiple choice in my favor, so if anything, I can at least get there halfway. Now you made it to the second round, dominated, You're moving on, obviously. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of players in this in this field for you. I'm that real are... excited about it. <laughs> Who do you want next? Uh, well, you know, I have, I have some beef left over with Donica, and uh, there's plenty of other people in Min, and I really would like to battle Cushing and even Emma and a few other people that, I, that I'll keep to myself. But uh, I'm feeling really confident. This was a really fun match, and I always love doing the Schmodown, so uh, it's a great honor to always come back and, and play. Well, fantastic. We can't wait to see what you do in the next Thank round. Thank you. Oh, Keaton, I would give you a hug, but you're much taller than me right now. It's okay. Are you doing okay? Oh God, I've done I've done better. I've done a lot better. We made it to the second round of this tournament, we and did. there's there are no slouches in this tournament, no. by the way. No, I don't know. It just I I was kind of thrown off. I I prepped for Emma, and uh, then you know Mike had to screw it all up, uh, and you know showing up today and not knowing who I was going to compete against, yeah. and somebody who I know is very good, and somebody who I just felt like there were a lot of. Uh, DC, Marvel, comic booky questions, which obviously you need to expect, but I should have chosen Middle Earth uh, on the spin. I was just going to ask you, do you wish you would have stuck with Middle Earth? I absolutely do, because I knew that was one of Adam's weaknesses, and I knew, at least with multiple choice, if I didn't know it, I could get it off of multiple choice. So that was a strategy that I played wrong. So what's next? I mean, I know, I know, like, obviously you're out of the tournament now, but you got to come back, right? I you absolutely gotta redeem have yourself. to come back. I, I have to, I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to, you know, battle Emma because I was supposed to battle her today and I just think it would be a fun match. Uh, you know, even uh, Jay, Jay was kind of giving me some, some uh, flack on my Instagram. So Jay, I don't know if you're out there, but I think I could kick your ass. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have a thing or two to say about that. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. But it was really nice to see you today. I'm sorry Thank it didn't you. go your you know, way, but you'll be back. I will definitely with the be ears. back. Absolutely with the ears. Thanks for having me again for the tournament. Anytime. 
All right, so you see that right there. I mean, Adam doesn't really care who he plays at this point. He is no. riding high on the horse. If he could get higher without medical assistance mm -hmm. after beating Hector Navarro, he is at that place now. Uh, Keaton comes in. Nice, uh, nice attitude as always. She brings a cherry disposition. Just it didn't uh, go her way this time, but she had a big win the last time out. So that's sometimes the wins and losses come here. It's uh, what you bring to the table the next time. Out. Yeah, when, when you get a knockout like that, you see a competitor in the postgame interview. You still want to see if they have the fire. She clearly still has a very competitive fire burning for the Inner Geekdom Tournament and in the movie trivia Schmodown, the future of the Schmodown, which only I don't even think the Lord our Savior knows what's going on right now in the head of Mike Kalinowski. That guy's no. head is like Vegas and God can't actually see into that particular city. Now, Ken, Shield. you and I want to talk about the Schmodown Patreon real quick. If you're yeah. not already a member of the movie trivia Schmodown Patreon, please check out the Patreon and figure out which tier is right for you. We love having your support. Absolutely. It, uh, it uh, goes to a good cause. Me and my domination here in uh, the Schmo. No? Congrats that, on the nights of Ken. Mm. Maybe t-shirts coming soon. In the meantime, you guys can check out more Movie Trivia Schmodown action. If you join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook group, or you can check out the Schmodown Rundown on iTunes. For Ken Knapsack, I am merely Mark Ellis at Ken Knapsack at Mark Ellis Live. And we'll see you guys real soon on the movie, a trivia, a Schmodown. What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And more winners! Adam Clavett came prepared for this match, and it showed immediately in round one. He had a two-point improvement from his last match, putting up eight points. However, on the other side of things, we saw Keaton Markey regress severely as she could only put up one point. For the rest of the match, it would be a struggle for Keaton. In her round two questions, she answered only two, although she would eventually sneak in a steal for one point. On this day, Adam would not be denied a chance at his first career knockout and did so by going four of five on his turn, and the final score was 18 to four. The 14 point differential is the largest so far in the Intergeekdom division. On the day, Adam went 14 of 18 for 78% correct. It's his best showing of the season. And as for Keaton, she tallied four correct answers out of 16. Her performance today was a 33% drop from her last match. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Showdown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tears in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.